this series of videos we're going to be looking at how we add video to slides and as always we're going to be looking at this in three steps first of all we look at the finished version what it looks like when we've completed the work we're going to look then at how we do it and crucially thirdly we're going to look at why we would do this in our educational context so let's have a look first of all at what this looks like when it's finished <laughs> So as you can see that's simply a piece of video playing over the top of a slide and then when we project that uh, the video will play out in full screen. Very simple, very straightforward. So let's look at how we would do that. There are a few things to be aware of when we're putting video onto PowerPoint. So the first thing is that this is video that we already have on our computer in our files. It's not video that we're taking from the internet so we're not talking in this video about how we embed a video for example from YouTube. That will be covered in another video, but for now, let's look at how we would use video that we already possess. So we may have created our own video, or we may have downloaded it from a free website, or you may have purchased a clip yourself. What we're going to do to start with, as always, is create a new slide, and I do that by going up here to New Slide, click New Slide, and choose whichever type of slide I want. You can see in this case I've selected blank, so I'll just click on there. We have a blank slide, so what I want to do now is go and find my video content and bring it into the slide. So I go to insert, go right across to video, click down, and this time I'm going to video on my PC. So I click video on my PC, and that will take me to the particular video that I want. So I click on that and then insert. By default, it will fill the whole of the slide, which is exactly what I want for this purpose. However, as you can see, I've got a hand in here, another diver, uh, was filming the turtle as well as myself so I don't necessarily want that so if I look along the bottom here to the timeline I can see that this is 13 seconds long which is too long for my purposes and as we've said later on in the video we'll be looking at why we might use this but if it's too long it may not serve the purpose that I had in mind for it so I need to be able to trim this down there are two ways in which I can do that firstly if I go up to playback up here click on playback and we get another uh, ribbon here and this is all about editing and manipulating the video so in this case I can go to trim video here if I click on that I get this window with these with this interface here I'm just going to cancel that and show you another way of doing it a little bit quicker so I click on the video again and then this time I right click and I get the trim icon there and I click on that and I've got the same window so two ways of accessing the trim function so with the trim feature Actually, there's only two things I can do. I can trim from the front at the beginning of the video, or I can trim from the back of the video. So I can make it shorter. What I can't do is crop, edit, move things around. That's not, uh, it hasn't got that sophisticated capability, but nevertheless, it's perfect for what I want to do now. So we've said it's 13 seconds, which is too long. I want to get rid of this hand. So I'm gonna bring it in a little bit from the beginning. And we wanna make sure the turtle's in perfect flight there so about three seconds and I can also change the tar start time here as you can see so let's be as specific as we can it's just over three seconds and uh, let's bring it in I, I like to see him swimming out into the open water but let's just go there for the moment to show you the purposes of this demonstration okay so that's perfect footage for what I want to do and it depends upon what you have in mind as to how long you want your video to to play for there may be specific things that you want your students to see that you'll want them to respond to, to think about, to consider, to reflect upon, etc. So obviously you will trim your video down according to the needs of what you want to do. Once you're happy with the length of your video, then you're going to press OK. And now that will just play through as we have before. However, what we want to do, and I think this is a really great tip, is rather than it just playing through once, and then your students say, so, so Miss, could you play that through again? Could you play it again? What we can do is we can manipulate the setting up here so that it plays for as long as we want it to so if we go back up again playback to loop until stopped then that will play now continuously it will play to the end and then start again automatically we can also make sure that it starts automatically here so by clicking automatically start automatically and loop until stopped that means that you've got this continuous loop playing uh, for as long as you want to it to play for you can also ensure that it plays in full screen so let's click that one as well and then if we go and have a quick look at this down at slide view there it is 
a beautiful turtle. And there we go, started again there, you see. Okay, so we press escape once to stop it, and we press escape again to come back to this view. Now that we've created our video, let's look at why we might use this. And one of the reasons I think uh, that I've used this before and I think works really nicely is a starter activity. So at the beginning of your lesson or beginning of your session, you can use this as a new activity. So if I walk you through how I've used it in the past, I have classroom open, students come in and the video is already playing on its continuous loop as they enter. There may be some instructions that I'm writing on the board as well. I might put a caption into the video uh, as well. And it just may be that you're getting them to think. So the video is acting as a stimulus. It may be that you want them to notice something. You want them to see something. You want them to reflect on how they feel. How does the video make them feel? What do they think about what they're seeing? Um, in this case with the turtle, for example, it could be an introduction to marine conservation or conservation in general, or a, a conversation about the environment. If it was English, for example, it could be the star to stimulus for creative writing. Um, what happened? What's about to happen? Where's the turtle come from? Where's he going to? What's his plight? It could also be talking about character description, for example. And then in sciences or geography, you could be that you're showing a video of a process or a video of something that happens, and then you're getting your students to reflect on that, think about that, and talk that through and articulate their understandings. Similarly, in languages, I think this is a fantastic use of um, promoting use of language so you could be asking students to explain in the target language what's happened what is happening again what has happened what's going to happen in the future so lots of different use of tense or tenses and encouraging students to use particular target vocabulary as well and of course in my own subject in PE if we're showing a particular bit of footage we might be asking the students to talk about energy systems that are being used particular techniques that the performer is using we might focus on skill acquisition or we might focus on sports psychology issues and things that are happening in society currently so there are so many ways in which you can use a short video clip at the beginning of the lesson on continuous loop to act as a stimulus for a really great activity which then hopefully will lead on to really rich and really purposeful learning and engagement and discussion which is the direction in which you want your lesson to go in and the other thing as well that I've used it before is later on in the curriculum you can come back and use that same footage later for retrieval practice to trigger memory or remember we looked at this and we had this conversation about that and it drew out this or let's use that language again that we talked about or do you remember you discussed this and so we can use it again for retrieval practice and reinforcing our understanding our students understanding of particular topics and concepts so there we are we've had a video on looking at video as a loop uh, as a beginning a stimulus activity for students we've looked at how we can create that up and then we've looked more specifically this just now at why we might use this in our educational context i hope you found this video useful if you have please give it a like and i'll see you in the next video